Welcome to Artists in Residences, the Westport Library's virtual artist series. I'm Carol erger exhibit curator at the library. Today, Migs Burroughs takes us to the studio of Charles Douthat, a retired litigator, a published poet, and a self-taught abstract painter who found his creative voice later in life after a long illness changed his life's trajectory. Charles says his paintings rarely start with a plan. Not knowing where he's going or what he's looking for, he begins simply with a personal feeling, an empty canvas, a brush and a tube of paint. And what starts out as an appealing line or shape or a color combination is then worked and reworked and reworked some more, giving each canvas a unique physical presence and a very personal sense of expression. So let's join Migs and Charles and Charles's daughter, Jean, who's helping out with the camera work today and get an inside look at the studio, the creative process and the poetry of Charles Douthat. Thanks so much, Carol. Uh, we are in the home of Charles Douthat. Did I get that right? Close enough, Nick. Not do that. No, will you tell me? I mean, <laughs> it's it's Douthat. Douthat. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Good. Okay. Well, we're off to a good start here. Um, well, you are. Believe me, you are not the first person who hasn't pronounced my last name perfectly. What are some of the weird pronunciations that you've gotten? Oh, Douthat, Douthat, Douthat. <laughs> you name it. This and that. Um, well, Charles is an accomplished, uh, what, would, what was the right term? Abstract, I would say abstract painter, but are you an abstract expressionist? Or what is there a particular, more specific term? I, not that I know of. I would just say I, I paint in abstraction, um, which means that usually there's no figure in the painting that corresponds to something in reality. It's just uh, an accumulation of paint in lines and shapes and colors. Okay, I think you know most people, and I'll include myself, are are mystified because it's such an it's such an interesting process because we don't see anything we recognize. Sometimes there's a like looking at a cloud, I can see Santa Claus or something, but you know usually it's. Uh, and, and we're, you know, most people, they, it could be visually very pleasing or sometimes it'd be visually upsetting. I mean, just discordant kind of, you know, shapes and things. But in your head, do you have a scene that you're abstracting like, oh, this is the, this is the forest behind my house and I'm going to abstract it somehow, you know? Um, that's not really how I go about it. Okay. Um, mostly what I do, it's a, process of uh, discovery. And so I start painting and I work until I find something that uh, I find interesting or appealing or moving. Um, I think the truth is most of the paintings uh, express some emotional state that I'm in or that I found, uh, but that emotional state's expressed abstractly, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I think it's just, again, probably difficult for any like, general public to relate to it, because if we don't do it, I mean, if you're if you're an artist that, and your wife is, a, you know, a very accomplished, excellent artist, but very, I would say, realistic or maybe impressionistic in some way, but very realistic, uh, you know, vibrant colors and, and very specific. When you look at a painting, you know what she's conveying, or, you know, at least the, the subject matter is kind of clear but uh so it's a very interesting uh and i don't know they say opposites attract is that is that part of the <laughs> well maybe maybe a better way of putting it is this is painting abstractly is the best i can do um, <laughs> I, i'm not gifted in drawing i'm not gifted in reproducing the world in a way that people can see it uh, but i do have some uh way of painting that's my own that uh, works for me that that speaks to me and uh, if all it is is lines and colors and shapes well um, that's the best I can do and it seems to it seems to make me happy makes when I produce <clears throat> something uh, that, that I think is finished 
Uh, well, that's a good point. I mean, you know, a lot of artists are always trying to please the gallery or this or that, or you know, and I think it's important if it comes through, if it's an authentic, it, I think people respond to that. They do to your work, I know. I mean, it's very, it may be abstract and maybe I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what it says. I don't know where, what I can't see Santa Claus in there, but what, you know, but it there, it, it communicates um, in a very powerful way. So you want to give us a little, uh, just get an overview of your of your studio there. By the way, your your daughter Jean is our camera person, so I may refer to her once in a while, and so everyone knows that it's not a phantom. Yeah. Well, this this room, my studio, I think is is a little bit. Uh, it expresses something about myself, which is that uh, maybe I wasn't born to be a painter, but I've become one. And <laughs> my studio is a living room in the house, um, and when I moved in here a few years ago after Julie and I got together, uh, it was an empty living room because her ex-husband had taken away all the furniture. So oh. there was this very nice, large, empty room with lots <laughs> of windows and it wasn't being used. And I thought this is gonna be my studio. And it's, it's worked out that way. Um, it's a big room. I'm gonna yeah. walk down toward the far end of it. Okay. Um, you can probably see windows on the side. But to have a place where I could work, um, I had built this movable wall. And this is basically uh, where I paint uh, my paintings. Um, it, what's interesting or maybe most interesting to me is when I moved in here and started working in this room, my paintings, uh, which had been quite small, uh, suddenly got very large. And I guess I don't think there's an accident uh, in that in that development. Um, so uh, this is where it works. And now I love this wall. It's, it's almost a work of art in itself because it has little vestiges of, of the individual paintings that, that have happened here. No, it's um, wonderful. It's like, yeah, it is a work of art. I mean, and yeah, like you said, it's got sort of a history wall of your, I mean, you know, no, nobody else would, but you know, what colors and drips and things, but yeah, I think as it, you frame that, frame it or not frame it, and it hangs in MoMA, and and you know, I nobody would uh, be surprised. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> may, may it be so, Mix. May it be so. Uh, they'll, they'll have to they'll have to argue with me to to get it out of here. Ever. <laughs> okay. So, what does it look like when you're working on something, or you know? Um, well, um, I'll I'll pick up a, a yeah. painting and show you. Um, I have screws in the board that expand so that I can hang the canvases. And this is actually, this is one of the very first large paintings that I did uh, when I moved in here. Um, and, I, you know, it's in the nature of these paintings that I can't really remember how I did them. Hmm. Uh, or, or what happened to bring them into being. But I'm sure, as you can see, there are a lot of false starts and different parts of the painting that got covered up or exposed. And that's, that's kind of how I still work. Um, I start with something. I may have to paint over it many times uh, to get finally some image or combination that pleases me. I wonder if I could ask Jean to kind of move in slowly and get a as they say yeah. in cinema, a tight shot of some just textural, what are, you know, just so we get a sense of the medium and the brush strokes and the drips and really get a kind of an up close. Yeah, see, oh, that's great. Yeah, see, there, I mean, there's so much going on. I mean, look at that. I mean, yeah, it's sort of like worlds within worlds of, yeah. And yeah, I, See, and that's so when you're in a gallery and you get to look at something like this, you, you get the, the luxury of, of spending time with a piece or if it's hanging in your home, I think that's the beauty of it. it. Your first glance is like, oh, it's a lot of abstract shapes and things put together, but then you look at it and it's very complex. But um, so is there a title? What I'm always curious about how do artists title their pieces. Um, do you have a system or are they just kind of come into your head or? I, I do have a system. Okay. And it's, it's 
number system. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I, this is, I think, Weston number three or Weston number two, something like that. Okay. And so virtually every painting I've done over the last few years has been numbered. And, and we're up to like 75 by now, something like that. Oh. Um, they're all great paintings, but, you know, they, they get finished. I decide they're finished and I number it and then I, then I move on. Um, I just decided that titles um, are too complicated for me. Um, as you know, Mix, I, I'm also a poet. Mm. And for some reason, keeping the words out of the paintings oh. seems important to me. Um, so I, I don't title them. They aren't about anything exactly, even yeah. if they correspond to some emotional state that uh, right. that came came through me into the into the work. So no, in a way, it's a very intimate snapshot of you know it's a not a very descriptive word, but you know of of your state of mind or being at that moment which is con you know conveyed we don't necessarily know what it is but it's it's there for us to explore i mean it is kind of so yeah so you're a poet as well and you said you don't want you don't, there's no crossover you don't you see this as visual poetry in any way or not really um they they i i don't know what an mri would show of my brain when i'm painting <laughs> when i'm writing poems but i suspect they'd be uh, they'd show different places lit up. Uh, for whatever reason, usually when I'm writing poetry and you know, during a period when I'm writing poetry, I'm not painting. And usually when I'm painting, I'm not writing poems. I, I can't exactly explain it, except to say that it's the two activities, though they are both you know, artistic and both creative, call on different qualities that I have. And they, they just don't seem to hmm. go exactly together. Um, I, I can't really explain it much better than that. Yeah, well, sometimes no explanation is the best one. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, you want to show us some more work or show us around? Yeah. Um, well, well, actually, uh, could we look at it close up of your workspace? The, all the paint, not the space, but we, the paint, I just like, I love these kind of work table, just kind of a thing of all the colors and tubes and i just to me photographically the, the I, I i just love you know some are crumpled some are brand new some are open some are just beyond you know they're 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 totally exhausted uh, uh, it's a it's a mess isn't it <laughs> yeah but it's a well it, it shows how much goes into so when you're doing a work it, is it, I mean, is it to me? It would take you know. I would just be scratching my head and go, "What what color do I use next?" Or does it come kind of intuitively to you? Oh, I'm just going to go for the cerulean blue. I mean, I don't know. How long does it take to pick a color? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes it takes a while to pick the right color. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's all kind of experimentation. It's all stuff that's happening in the moment, um, and you just have a feeling that this painting needs some yellow, or you have painted the yellow and you realize that was a mistake. This painting does not need yellow. And you move <laughs> on to something. Um, you know, I wish like many of these things, I wish there was a system that I understood better because then I could follow it every time I paint. But the yeah, truth is it's sort of new every time, which is both the wonderful thing about it and kind of the scary, yeah. inti intimidating thing is you start from nothing and you have to put something together. Yeah, it's a, it's a living thing. I mean, right, a system would just take the joy out of it. Um, any uh, any other work we could look at that you want to, we could just get a sense of the variety of... of sure, stuff. let me, I'll take this one yeah. down. Um, and, and then I have a very insensitive question to ask. <laughs> Here. Hmm. Now, let me guess. That's Weston number 14. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking it's maybe about 36. If oh, I okay. turn the paint over, I could tell. But yeah. I'm off by So that. this, 
you know, this represents development of my painting. And um, whereas in, in the first one, it seemed like sort of a, a gathering of random elements. In this one, it's, it's got a lot more order to it. Um, and it has this very nice open feel. Yeah, yeah. Which again, it creates a different kind of feeling, a different kind of response. Yes. Than that first sort of all over the place painting. And then there's like a Calder mobile mobile hanging in the middle there, right? I mean, that's the way I see it. But, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, very, yeah, I, no, I, yeah, it's interesting. The open space, it's not, it's, there, it's not quite as much, well, there's a lot going on, but the relief of that, of that open area is nice. So here's the insensitive question. If, because when I went to, I mean, I went to theater school, but it, I took art classes and, and the teacher, whenever you did a drawing or anything, he turned it upside down and said, if it doesn't look good upside down, then it's crap. So <laughs> do you, you know, like, and nobody understood that. Well, it took a while to realize, well, you know, it, composition, it, it, anyway. So it, is there a, if somebody, if you sold this to somebody and you went to their house and they hung it upside down, would it bother you? Uh, I would figure that they have made a mistake. Okay. <laughs> but, but it, well, since we're on that subject, let me take this one down. Okay. And I'll, let me walk to the other end and bring a new painting up. Okay. okay. Oh. When you said turning poems, uh, paintings on their end, um, that's something I do all the time. Oh, really? Uh, if, if you look at this painting, you can clearly see that at some point. Yeah, the drips. There. Well, I'm seeing drips going sideways, right? That's right, which means that at some point I was painting with the canvas in this way. Which, you know, is kind of an interesting painting in itself. Yeah. But then at some point when I was working on it, hmm. I decided that it belonged this way. Really? Uh, and I can't tell you exactly why, except that it seemed to me there was a face looking out of this painting. Mm -hmm. um, and so I conveniently decided that this was a self-portrait of me mm -hmm. at a particular time and place in my life. So. Um, this is one painting where there, where, where I consider there is sort of an image in there that corresponds to, to something in reality. But again, I turn the paintings when I'm working. Sometimes there's only one way it could be. Other times um, I just work with it until I find the way it's supposed to hang. Okay, well, I don't feel so bad about asking that question because you're, so you're the one, you can, you take, you have the liberty of to, to turn it but once it's turned but you sign once you're settled on that did you sign do you sign it like in the lower right hand corner or somewhere so it's usually on the back and sometimes when i know someone's going to be unsure about it i'll put an i'll put an up arrow yeah. on, on the back of the canvas so that people know which way <laughs> under penalty of death right well and you know and it's interesting too i sometimes i will get out a painting that i did you know a couple of years ago and i'll look at it and realize that it really needs to be turned over the other way. And hmm. I'll change the direction of the arrow. You know, such such strange wow. things happen. That's great. Well, it shows evolution of some, some either the painting evolved or you did. I don't know. <laughs> but, well, yeah, you, you see things differently after time and you, sure. you know, hopefully you get better at what you're doing. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's just like, you know, I mean, it's a weird metaphor, but, you know, you, you hear one song, I hear a song today, and I tomorrow I'll hear the same song, and it just won't affect me the same way, or I don't like it as much, or I like it more, or whatever. But back to your poetry, did you want to, would you do us uh, uh, the pleasure of either reading or reciting one of your, a couple of your poems, so we get a sense of what that side of you is about? But rather than recite, let me get, let me get the book, and I'll read okay, the book. Okay, sure. Go back here, the light's a little better. Um, and, and what's the name of the book? Show us the book so we can- uh, uh, The book is called 
Blue for Oceans. Okay. And uh, it has a, a portion of a, of a painting by Constable on the cover. Um, and the, the book came out, I don't know, almost, almost 10 years ago now. Mm. Um, but the, it was, and when the book came out, I hadn't started, right, I hadn't started painting yet. Um, oh. And it was sort of after this book came out that, that I started uh, also painting as well as writing. So, I mean, do you want me to try and read something now? Yeah, please. Yeah, if you would. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll read two, two poems. Um, if I can find them. Yeah. One's a short poem. It's what you might call a lyric poem. Uh, it's, it's called, titled, Made. Made. Without knowing, we become. Like a word mispronounced or a screen door slammed. Soup slowly burning to the bottom of a pan. First one thing, then another, among other things we are. Desired, defaced, discarded, yet generally ready for more. We are sunlight in a window and the glass within its frame. We are the long view taken in and a crack barely visible in the corner of the pane. We are useful at times or worse than useless. Breakable, beautiful, made. Mm. And if that's a lyric poem, this is uh, much more of a narrative poem. It has more of a story. I, I suppose maybe that first poem is a little bit more like an abstract painting. Yeah. And the second poem is uh, more narrative. It, it tells a story. You know what it's about. Um, the poem is called The Hold. There it is, just before putting out the light. Here in the doorway to his room, the unmistakable smell of him, though his train pulled out an hour ago. Not a child's smell anymore, but a young man's air of college nights and long wool coats and jokes so cool they cannot be explained. You had to be there, dad, he says. Now in his scented wake, I wait, knowing he'll soon be gone for good, graduating to some new city, paying too much rent. And this room where for years he slept and read while brown hair broke through on his face and chest, soon it will be a place for someone else to rest, but not quite yet. This fragrant air is sweet to me tonight. The dusty heat rising from household vents, the windows tight, his house warmed high school books upright in their case. Like me, they've done their work. What we instructors had to say has all been said and what he took to heart is as unfathomable now as what he cast away. For he's moving on and on his own to worlds he'll live to see, but I will never fully know. Of course, he'll stop again to sleep and eat. We'll speak again of Charlemagne and Russell Crowe, but the being of him, that second self housed for years nearly inside my skin is elsewhere, flowing on, flown. How does a father live, I wonder? But it's late now. At the stair, my wife is calling, and so I remember that morning my son was first handed to me, still blood smudged and birth slippery. And because I was a new father then, and because my inexperience showed, the midwife taught me how to hold a child properly. Lightly now, she cautioned, but also pulling at my arms, testing me until I sensed what it meant not to let go. Uh, I, you I know it's beautiful. I just don't have the words because I'm not a, 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 equipped to, to, to comment any in articulate way, but I, I, it's beautiful and evocative, I guess is the word I can come up with. It's just so, how, is the process, like the phrases, scented wake and blood smudge, I mean, these things, are these, I know it must be different for everyone, but 
did they just arrive? You know, I've heard, I've talked to songwriters who say, you know, sometimes the words just arrive and they wake up and scribble them down. Or do you, is it a, is it a task? I have to make this phrase work, you know? Um, well, you know, if, if painting has to do with the eye, uh, poetry has to do with the ear. Mm. Uh, it's, it's what you hear. And when you're writing, sometimes when I'm writing, I'll find myself talking out loud, speaking out loud uh, from, from what I'm writing down. But often it's just, I, I hear the voice inside my head. And, you know, sometimes it's a, it's a really good voice and it comes through and I can write the words and it, it turns out you know, almost like magic. It's like entering into something and then uh, it's got hold of you, you write it, it's as though you've received a message from somewhere uh, and you write it down and it's great. Um, that doesn't happen all that often, um, any more than, you know, painting a painting works out so easily. Uh, usually you get part of it and then you go away and you have to wait sometimes and then you get another part of it and then you're taking a shower sometime and, and you realize there's some line that belongs in this poem and you have to remember it until you get out of the shower and write it down. <laughs> and make it a poem. So it, it can happen lots of different ways, but it, it is very different. It's, it's all, a, it's all a creative process, but, but writing poems is really different from painting paintings. Yeah. That's fascinating. So we, we would like to touch early on, like, you know, there's some people that said, you know, our, born wanting to be an artist. I was drawing from the age of two. That's not quite the case with you. What You have a very different career, which I think it makes it all the more, your whole career more compelling and fascinating is that how you, what you came to be a very artistic person, poet, words and, 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 and marks on canvas. So what, what were you before that? <laughs> what was I? That's what was really a good question. You, yeah. Well, well, let's say what is your, what was your occupation? Okay. Well, I'll I'll tell you about it. Um, I I was a lawyer for many years. I was a trial lawyer, a courtroom lawyer, actually. Mm. Um, and I, when I talk to people about becoming an artist or a poet, usually there there are two stories. One of the stories is like the one you mentioned. Uh, I started drawing when I was six and I've been drawing ever since. Or I, my first poem I wrote when I was 11 and my mother, you know, mm. pasted it on the refrigerator and I still have it somewhere. That's not what happened to me. Um, I was a lawyer. Uh, I worked at a very high pressure job for a long time. Uh, and when I was about 50, I uh, got sick. And this is one of the stories that you hear about people who become artists or poets is, they have a trauma, they have a life event that sort of changes their direction, uh, usually from outwardly to inwardly. And that's what happened to me. Um, I, I got sick with one of these chronic fatigue illnesses when I was about 50. And it sort of took me out of my life and mm -hmm. out of the momentum of my life. I, could, I really couldn't work for a year or so. Uh, and during that time, I started reading poetry for the first time and eventually started writing poems uh, because they, it seemed to me then that they had more to say to me about uh, what had happened to me in my life, what was what I was feeling in my life. Uh, and I really needed to express some of that, uh, some of that stuff that we all carry around uh, and that usually we just try to suppress or, or get past. So that's how poetry happened for me. And I Eventually, I sort of, I'm, I'm self-taught, which means um, I read a lot of poetry and then I imitated the poets that I thought uh, were, spoke to me most directly. Uh, and eventually I, you know, published some poems and eventually I published a book and, you know, I, I consider myself an amateur uh, <laughs> as a poet, just as I do as a painter, uh, which takes a little of the pressure off. Uh, it means I don't have to paint another painting next week or write a poem uh, to support my job at the university, um, but I'm an amateur. Um, and painting sort of happened the same way. It took something, um, it, it took a, a really a, a very difficult life event for me when I, I got divorced after 
30 years of marriage. And I'd been writing poems. I had published the book, but for some reason, when I got divorced, I stopped writing for a long time. And I needed something, some way to express myself that wasn't verbal, I think, that didn't involve words, that wasn't trying to explain how I was feeling. Uh, and I, I started painting. Um, and it started, you know, in a very primitive way, but in the same way, uh, I found some painters that I admired that I thought I could, I could do paintings like them. They were abstract painters. Uh, and I started small and I just imitated until I could kind of find my own way and find my own methods and find the things that really seemed to move me the most. Well, it's kind of a long story, but you asked. No, yeah, no, it's I, it's an amazing story and a, and a wonderful one because you know um, it, it's, uh, it's so. Before we we're almost out of time, but could we? It, do you have like? The, is there anything you're working on, or the late? Let's say one of your more current pieces, or just end on a kind of a another show, another piece of work that we could just. Sure. No, I'll I'll let me pull up a, a painting yeah. that I've been working on the last week or so. Give me one second. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, that's certainly different. Okay. It, it's totally different. Um, <laughs> and, and I don't know exactly how this came about, but uh, it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a sad painting. The colors are very muted. It's sort of a, a fallish painting, I think. Hmm. And I'm working, and, and one of the things, I'm kind of happy with much of it, but uh, there's something about, this yellow stripe that is both important to the painting, but I, I don't feel like I've got it right. And so mm. that's what I'm working on now. And, and if you weren't here, I'd probably have a tube of yellow paint and a brush <laughs> and trying for some other tone or color that kind of would finish the painting. Uh, that's always kind of an issue, finishing the painting. When is it really done? You're uh, right. it, it's not getting there, but it's not quite finished. Yeah, what's the age old question? No, it's startling. I, I see the colors as being, in a, in a human term, distressed. You know, they're not pure, they're not solids, they're not crisp, clean, contemporary, you know, blocks of, you know, I forget the artist, it's not a Joseph Albert's or something. No, they're, they're just, they're, they're very, uh, I see them as distressed or, anyway, that's, that's, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for, uh, sharing your studio and thanks to Jean and um, maybe um, one day we'll convince your wonderful wife, uh, Julie, to, to, <laughs> to do a studio tour as well. I know she's reluctant, but I thought I'd unfairly sneak in that uh, request. So. That, that's good. Well, I, I, you know, I, I'm happy to have you here and I'm happy to talk about myself and, and what I do. Um, but I'm also slightly embarrassed by it. I have to tell you, I'm just, uh, it's something about being, yeah. feeling like amateur still, um, which is, it's a great feeling, but it's also, yeah. it, it makes it, um, I want it, to, I want it to be not terribly important so that I can keep doing it without a lot of pressure. Yeah. That, that, that makes sense. And arts, art's a very personal thing too. And it's kind of like, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. So, but I, that's all the more reason we appreciate you doing this. Um, and, uh, but, and thank you. We, we enjoyed it. Okay. It was good to talk to you next. Okay. Take care. Bye. Thanks Charles for allowing us into your studio today and sharing how you work. And thanks to Migs and also to Jean for helping with today's recording. To see more of our artists in residences videos, check out the library's website, westportlibrary.org. Thanks, and hope to see you back at the library soon.